Business Week. I'm also the author of a new book, The Everything Store, Jeff Bezos in the Age of Amazon. Thank you for attending our evening. It's Innovators and Entrepreneurs in the New Normal Economy. Our sponsors tonight are Bloomberg Government and ASEP Portugal Global. Uh, and now, uh, before we start today's discussions, I have the privilege of introducing the Consulate General to San Francisco from Portugal, Nuno Mathias. Oh, wait, did I get the name pronunciation right now? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, thank you for having us. Just going to say very few words. The main speaker will be the minister. I just want to say, just maybe lay out the ground. Uh, Portugal and California are not new, new friends, so to speak. Uh, in 1542, João Rodrigues Cabrillo landed in San Diego, and since then we started a very good friendship. In the 1800s, a large Portuguese immigration came to California, and uh, since then uh, helped to develop and uh, very much were on the backbone of Californian uh, development. Uh, and now, more recently, in, in Silicon Valley, we have young Portuguese startups that are um, striving. Actually, when we Portuguese, we like to call ourselves the West Coast of Europe. Uh, not only because we are geographically and literally the West Coast of Europe. Um, and so in that regard, it gives us a, a, a strategical position, a unique strategical position at the end point of the European continent and the European market. Uh, but also because like this West Coast, uh, Portugal is reinventing itself uh, through innovation. And so much has in the 1500s, where we were pioneers in uh, exploring the world, in cartography, in astronomy, in building ships. Uh, now, Portugal is reinventing itself through innovation. And we are at the forefront of the newest and finest technologies, from biotechnology, nanotechnology, going all the way to uh, ICTs uh, and renewables, you name it. And so, um, this I believe you will hear also from uh, the Minister. The Minister does not really require any introduction. Uh, his professional qualities are well known. And so I will not dwell into his uh, uh, specific but I would only like maybe to stress out and underline one aspect regarding uh, the Minister of Economy, uh, Lina. He's above all an accomplished businessman, meaning that he, before becoming a politician, knew uh, the know-how, the hands-on job, what it means to be a businessman. And I think this brings to his current position a very interesting asset that I'm sure he will enjoy very much. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the Minister of Economy of Portugal, Mr. Antonio Pizzolita. We moved 
from the current and technical account deficit of around 10% in 2010 to a 1% surplus in 2012 and a forecast surplus of more than 3% in 2013. Domestic consumption is stabilizing and unemployment has been once again being revised down, downwards from the peak that achieved in March 2013. In the last two quarters, unemployment rate fell from 17.8% to 15.6%, well below the initial estimate of 18% for 2013. This year has also been a very good year a record year with a growth rate of 7% to September. This economic upturn has been possible because Portuguese companies have become more competitive. They have reduced their cost base, flexibilized their operations, conquering increasing market shares in several export markets in Europe and other traditional markets such as the United States. The United States is traditionally one of our major, major trading partners outside the European Union and is currently the sixth most important customer and the 13th supplier of Portugal. It is the second most important export market for Portuguese companies outside the European Union and has grown 50% over the last four years. We are also becoming more relevant in Africa, in particular in Portuguese speaking African countries such as Angola and Mozambique, countries that are emerging. And our export sector has also opened up new markets in Asia, the Middle East, and Gulf countries. The growth of Portugal in the last quarters is also related to a new and increasing entrepreneur culture amongst. Portugal's younger generation. For every company that closed this year, two new were created in their place. Portuguese do exceptional achievements when they are out of their comfort zone. Entrepreneurship has been one of the main factors for the reduction of unemployment rates. But I recognize there is still a long way to go to create a Portugal that allows opportunities to its best educated young generation ever. As a matter of fact, some young people are creating the opportunity themselves by their initiatives, learning by doing. That is the only way I know for being an entrepreneur. Success comes by learning with experience, with mistakes. Each mistake is an opportunity to grow. That is the culture of the Portuguese youngest generation. Last week, Forbes Best Countries to do business ranking placed Portugal as number 20 in 145 countries. Ahead of countries with a strong reputation as Shield, Germany, Israel, Spain and South Korea. All these factors concur to a much better business environment, but we as government of Portugal are not we are working to be in the top five in this kind of rankings in the very near future. This progress has been achieved during a period of exceptionally restrictive public spending. As you know, Portugal requests financial assistance in April 2011 after a decade of deceptive growth and is currently still under an adjustment plan fostered by the European Commission, Diana and the European Central Bank. We are committed to end up this program in the summer of 2014 having kept all our international commitments. Even though we are conf confident about these positive signs I have mentioned, we will need to 
sustainable economic growth, there are still challenges ahead to overcome in order to create wealth and bring down unemployment in a significant way. And the most important challenge has to do with finance, financing our entrepreneurship spirit. Portuguese companies operate in a single European market of over 500 million people and no trade barriers. That means that Portuguese companies compete in the exact same circumstances as German or Dutch companies, but right now do not have the same access to finance as those some German or Dutch companies. A Portuguese company with the same balance sheet, the same PL as a German company will pay a premium of maybe two or three percent for its financing, and that is unsustainable in the long run. We are currently working on solutions to help solve this issue, but the, real, the reality is that a structural way, the only structural way, will be a banking union in Europe. This is an issue that requires a truly European solution, and until such a decision is made, there will, there will be no real single market working in Europe. As I have said before on other occasions, there are problems and issues that each member state of the European Union can work out by themselves on a national level, but on other issues, only a coordinated effort amongst European Union institutions and European Union member states, governments can supply the real and effective solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to finalize expressing my confidence in the Portuguese road, but also telling you that in order to consolidate this road, we need investment, private investment. The opportunity in Portugal, I think it's clear, as a platform to do business in Europe, a market of 500 million people, but also as a hub to export and do partnership in order to grow in Africa. We have a traditional and very strong relationship with African countries and also with Latin America. I, our markets, I think, are recognizing this potential and upside. For instance, our stock market has already grown 25% since July. So, there's an invitation. Come to Portugal, know our country, our companies, our young generation, and invest. Invest in a safe country, a country that welcomes all Americans. And I'm pretty sure that I am one of the luckiest economic ministers right now, since I think Portugal, we will close this adjustment program by May 2014, and it will be recognized as one of the coolest countries to invest in 2014. Thank you very much for your